How's it going everyone? Ben here, your friendly neighbor and mess student. Today we're going to be talking about a pretty serious and pretty important topic and that is on how doctors here in the US specifically and doctors in the Western world often misdiagnose, underdiagnose or delay diagnosis of a disease called ankylosing spondylitis among black patients. It's an autoimmune spine condition which progressively over time what happens is that the spine gets stiffer and stiffer. Spine Parts of the spine start to fuse causing increased stiffness and um, as it goes through its disease course and later on in the disease course if you are not being treated by it can lead to multi-organ manifestations which means it, it won't just affect the spine over time over time it'll start affecting your fingers it'll start affecting other joints and it'll start affecting other organs such as your eyes your lungs and your heart so it's really important for me to cover this topic because uh, we see time and time and again for some reason here in the united states black patients are not being diagnosed as quickly as white patients and we'll we'll get to the reasons why i do want to emphasize in this video that ankylosing spondylitis is a rare a uh, pretty rare condition but if it doesn't go diagnosed early in life if it's caught later on it's much much harder to treat and that's why i really want to emphasize this subject of this video also fun fact if you are an internet sleuth and you like watching the try guys um a really famous person that has the diagnosis of ankylosing spondylitis is zach from the try guys he actually talks about it frequently in a lot of his videos because he does deal with chronic pain because of his illness so um it's not although it's a rare disease there are people that we know that have it and I also really want to emphasize that uh, compared to the racial distribution of ankylosing spondylitis, um, the majority of patients who do have this condition are white men, but black men and people of all races and genders can have this illness. Uh, and that's why it's important to not just focus on the clinical criteria for diagnosis for white men, but for everyone if they have red flag symptoms. However, here in the United States, a lot of doctors, when they want to diagnose or test someone for ankylosing spondylitis, they do a specific gene test, and that is the HLA B057 gene. A lot of fancy words and letters, but just know that they specifically test for this specific gene for ankylosing spondylitis. And it has a really high association with the disease, but only for white men. Among black people with ankylosing spondylitis, this gene is only attributed to 50 to 60% of the cases, which means that about 40 to 50% of black people with this disorder will not be diagnosed even if they're showing up to their doctor with these really red flag signs because the doctors will run these genetic tests and assume that they don't have it because they test negative for this gene. A recent study that was published in the Journal of Rheumatology in 2019 that looked at a large sets of data over 30,000 almost 30,000 patients with ankylosing spondylitis. They compared racial differences in how uh, the patients were managing their illness, and they saw that black patients were more likely to have a more severe disease course. They were more likely to have multi-organ and multi-joint beyond the spine manifestations of their illness, and they were more likely to have a higher inflammatory markers, which means that the disease was more severe and more active than it was compared to white patients. However, other studies show that in places like countries in Africa, diagnosis of ankylosing spondylitis tends to be pretty accurate for black patients and black patients tend to do better than white patients with ankylosing spondylitis in the countries within Africa. And that's because there is an emphasis of looking at the clinical criteria, not the lab or genetic criteria for the diagnosis of this illness there so they can catch this disease early. There's more resources for these patients to get treatment and there's better follow-up for these patients in other countries. That's not here in the US. So I know this is pretty concerning for y'all who are watching this video. If you're thinking of a loved one who's been having like maybe symptoms of ankylosing spondylitis or even worried that like, yo, I've been having 
I, I, I've been having back pain for a couple of months and I don't know if I have this illness. Well, luckily enough, the lab criteria isn't the only thing that's needed to get this diagnosis. What's really important for you all and what I want to teach y'all to make sure that you get an early diagnosis if you're having these red flag, what I call a red flag warning signs of ankylosing spondylitis, although it's rare, um, I think being aware of these symptoms that uh, will allow you to advocate for yourself to your doctor to seek a rheumatologist for a good clinical diagnosis. And some of these red flag warning sign symptoms that you should be aware of is if you're having what we call three months of inflammatory black back pain. What does that mean? Like, I have no idea what inflammatory back pain is. I even had to look this up myself. But inflammatory back pain is a type of back pain that doesn't remit. It doesn't get better. You're having this chronic back pain for over three months. For some reason, you're waking up with morning stiffness. For some reason, you feel that, why is, my, why is it so hard for me to bend side to side? Why is it so hard for me to bend up and back? And why am I so young with these symptoms? So usually patients with ankylosing spondylitis will present with their illness before the age of 40. So if you're a young patient waking up with morning stiffness, for some reason, you've been noticing that your flexibility on your spine is going down, but also you're having other symptoms such as uh, you're noticing redness in your eyes, you're having some form of diarrhea, you're breaking out into rashes for some reason, it's getting harder and harder for you to breathe. Like you're breathing more heavy over time, then it's probably a good idea to go to your doctor and tell them about these warning signs that you're having. Also, weirdly enough, the inflammatory back pain situation means that your pain can be relieved throughout the day as you do more exercise. So your back pain doesn't improve with rest, but for some reason improves the more you're out and active. And of course, one of the more severe symptoms that you should look out for is the fact that you notice that the your spine shape has been changing over time and usually it's for some reason, every day, like every couple of weeks after you wake up, you notice that you're more and more hunched, even though you're not trying to be more hunched. All of these red flag signs before the age of 45 to 40 is an indication of getting a full workup for ankylosing spondylitis by a licensed and board certified rheumatologist. These are doctors who are experts in the area of autoimmune diseases, which ankylosing spondylitis fits in. So if you go to your doctor and your doctor is concerned about these symptoms, it's good to ask for a referral for a rheumatologist that they trust and they can do a full workup, which includes the genetic test, but also uh, an experienced and well knowledgeable rheumatologist will look at the clinical findings and do specific x-rays and MRIs to make sure you meet all the clinical criteria to fit the definition uh, for the diagnosis of this illness. Anyways, I hope this video has been helpful in understanding some of the clinical criteria for ankylosing spondylitis, but also some of the ways that we fail in, in its treatment, diagnosis, and maintenance in black patients. And I hope uh, this the second part of this video where I talked about the clinical findings will help more and more patients go to their doctor and get diagnosed early. Although there is no cure for ankylosing spondylitis, the faster that we diagnose it, the earlier that we diagnose it, the better the quality of life it is for the patient. And that is my main goal in this video. My own sister was diagnosed with lupus and the stereotypical uh, patient profile is a black woman develops lupus. But my sister obviously is a brown South Indian woman who was diagnosed with lupus very very late and she ended up being in the hospital for two weeks almost passed away because of lupus when it's in an in inherently a very treatable illness in this day so that's why i'm making this video because i want to make sure everyone whether or not they have an autoimmune condition catches it early whether or not it has a cure it helps your quality of life by catching it early and getting the treatments that you need Anyways, thank you for watching this video. I hope you follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my daily life and activism work. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Mwah. This is Ben.